Good afternoon to you too. How are you? <laughs> How are you, buddy? I'm all right, mate. Oh, you're all a better for seeing your smiling face. Look at that weather. Look at that weather you've got. What's it? Yeah. How hot is it there? Um, I think it was uh, this morning when when I um, it was 19. Oh. Centigrade. I don't know what that's in Fahrenheit, but um. Ah. Americans worry. We, we don't worry about Fahrenheit. That's an American thing. It's um, it's pretty balmy. It's a balmy sort of 14, 13, 14 degrees here, actually. The sun's not particularly shining, but well, that's it's, mild. Dry. it's dry. It's a, it's a late winter, early spring day, which is nice. Is it, is it appropriate to wish you um, a happy belated birthday, or are you going to tell me to fuck off? Like you've done for the last twenty-one years on January, <laughs> on February the twenty. Yeah, no, no. Thank you, uh, thank you, and uh, fuck off. Um, no, <laughs> I, I would like actually take the opportunity to thank um, all those people who, who sent me uh, wishes for the uh, the sexy year. Believe it or not, uh, one of the accusations um, at um, posted against Anne Boleyn was that she had that she had um, introduced the French way uh, <laughs> to Henry VIII and uh, thereby wasting the royal seed by swallowing it. Ah, <laughs> that's not a waste though. I mean, it's full of nutrients, isn't it? So it's been so it's great for your skin as well. This yeah, 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 well, hey, come on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, Many happy, re many happy. I just thought I'd mention it because I know how um, how much you enjoy my birthday on tour. Uh, how how much of a big event it is. <laughs> I know, I know um, that you oh, always dear, insist as well. to our management and our agent that the the Stranglers British tour should be in March with your birthday right in the middle of it. Well, in sweet. So it worked, and and all Davy Greenfields as well, of course. God love yeah. him. Uh, yeah. Four days later, how how many strange events have we have we had in the middle of those? Like twenty, we'd we'd find out if there was a a day off, maybe on the twenty seventh or the twenty eighth, between my birthday and his birthday, and so we'd have a joint. Uh, well, fucking raw, I think is the word raw. Last time I sport you, you were out on the bike. Yeah, um, I hadn't been out on the bike a lot recently, just because of timings and stuff. And it was a glorious day, and I took it up onto the route Napoleon, which you have done actually. And there is on our I, on our website, I think there still is a sort of a GoPro or whatever you call it. Um, yeah, uh, of yeah, you yeah. the route Napoleon which is the route he took when he escaped from exile in, on the Isle of Elba, landed at Antibes and proceeded to go up via, uh, skirt the Alps and then come off, veer off at Grenoble and go on yeah. to Paris and then Waterloo. That was one of the, uh, I, was telling, I was just telling somebody the other day actually, that was a day where I literally spent, I mean, obviously I had my helmet on so nobody could say, but inside my helmet I spent six hours going, I've never seen I've never seen scenery like that. You, you do it in a day. How it's, far did um, you go? How far How far up did you go? Oh well, as far I, I was up at I was uh, three and a half thousand feet up. When I spoke to you, I was about three thousand uh, feet. Well, a thousand meters, so it's a, yeah. it's a bit bit yeah. more than three thousand feet, and it was great. It was just me and the bike, and those. Uh, Amazing Benz. Ah, I got a serious jealous pang when I saw you with all your gear on there and you showed me around and the motorbike was there and I was just thinking, oh man, I wish I was there. Uh, it's about my very first ever girlfriend. I was talking to you about this many, many years ago in a house that I lived in in Sunderland. I went up into the loft and I found um, a, just a bag of junk that had accumulated over the years. I tipped it out onto the, onto the floor and it was full of old memorabilia and 
trinkets and just a bag of stuff that everybody go, oh, look. And I found a little um, perfume tester bottle um, that I didn't know was there. And I unscrewed it and sniffed it. And it just took me back in my head to my first girlfriend, who was called Barbara. Uh, the smell of the perfume, I don't know why, because I hadn't seen or thought about her or anything. It's amazing, the, the power of, of smells. Um, I smelled it. And there I was. And I told you about it and you said, you should write a song about that. Can you remember yes. that? Yes, I do. Yeah. I, do. yeah. And I think you that's did. A, that's a great song. There's a lot of versions. There's two or three different versions. And I was wrestling with it quite, quite a lot. And then we got together down there and I played it to you and you went, right, you need to get rid of that. Take that out. Ding, da, ding, da, ding, da, ding. And we, we, we were brutal with it. Um, and pulled it back to, to where it is now. Um, it's amazing because people have asked about that tune and we've never done it live. It could lend itself to uh, one of our very rare acoustic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Levels, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, um, I have... Like Dave could, actually. Yeah, yeah. Dave and Barbara. We just yeah. have a whole set of people's names. That would be great. Yeah. Um, Cheesy Susie. Oh. <laughs> Norman, Norman Normal. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dagenham Dave. Dagenham Dave. Hey, don't Norman. bring Harry. Wasn't there a one about somebody called Danny with the, in the, from the Paul Roberts days? Cool Danny or something? Uh, yeah, never, we never recorded it. Uh, no, I, I've never heard any comment um, from those people about how we massacred their song. <laughs> I don't think you massacred it. I think you made it. I think you made it. I mean, all right, it's what one buys a great tune anyway. But but nah, yeah, that's and and I think I think arguably, and anyway, I'm setting myself up for this. I think arguably it could be one of Dave's, or I think it is one of Dave's finest moments. Yeah. Um, the keyboard solo in that, you can hear him pulling the stops out and dialing the reverb in all, all in one take. Yeah. Just it's sublime. Absolutely. No, sublime. I, I love playing it as well. Um, yeah, me too. All these years, I'm still finding different ways of playing my parts. Uh, personally speaking, it's always, uh, uh, it gives me, total freedom to explore different things and I'm still finding after all these years oh I'll play that instead of that and yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah because yeah. you can improvise over the, the two chords um, and it um, well it was one of the first things that we had in our set way back and um, we made it longer and longer because we didn't have enough material to fill out the proper set <laughs> yeah. but it was also uh, it was our it was our tribute to um uh, light my fire, really. Yeah, by the doors, and um, yeah. it uh, and it just developed from there, which is uh, great. It allowed everyone to express themselves on their particular yeah. instrument. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, it was, yeah. In that, it's it's one of the more successful interpretations, I think. I I think so. I mean, I um, I remember I hearing that when I was in, I was at school. Actually, I was I was I was about. 1977, I was about 14. Um, and I remember a girl coming up to me. She came up to me and she said, um, Chew and I chew and go, hey, Yeah, I hear you play the guitar. I said, I do. I, I, she said, Will you teach me how to play Walk On By by the Stranglers? And I said, um, How long have you got? <laughs> That's a good chat up line. Yeah, yeah, she was she was doing that with that chill gum, and she um, uh, I, I listened to it um, religiously, bought the EP, had the whole nine yards, and um, when it came to learning it for playing it with you guys, um, you can't mess with the with the solos, you know, the guitar solo, uh, you know, um, it's just for that thing is just perfect, which is why I play it note for note when I can, you know. Well, there are certain parts. 
certain strangle songs, I think, which you really don't want to. No, you can't. Fuck you can't. With. <laughs> I learned that. <laughs> you shouldn't yeah. fuck with. No, uh, no, no, no. It's almost like a classical piece. You don't want to. Some you can improvise, definitely. I yeah. can improvise the bass parts yeah. on Walk On By. But yeah. your, your uh, solo, guitar solo, and uh, Dave's um, solo, you can't improvise too much. Princess of the Streets is another one. You can't fuck with the guitar solo in that. Oh, Gordon Brown. I haven't seen Jet for ages, but I do talk to I spoke to him a few weeks ago, and I think uh, others spoke to him this week, actually. The last time we all, we saw Jet was, was when we did... Uh, was Guilford. it the... Was Star it, in Guildford. Was it the Guildford thing? Are we not, did we not see them since? We saw them a few months later for something else. We saw them twice in the space of about three or four months, and we haven't seen him for about two years, three years prior to that. Um, anyway, it's been it's been a while since I actually saw him, but I spoke to him, same as you. I spoke to him um, about six weeks ago. Um, as you know how much Jet loves Christmas, so I, I rang him up to wish him Merry Christmas. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> In my time, I think um, being a sexist pig sometimes, as we all are, I think in my time in the band, it's probably been the, uh, the garter, the frilly black leg garter for ladies with the rat on it. I think I've got one of them somewhere. I've got something else actually, which is really cool. Hang on, I'm going to show you this. I just uh, just get this. For those of you who like to uh, keep your beer cool in Australia, I've got one of these, which is a beer holder thing, which is really cool. Now, do we do these in the UK, or were these just in the uh, in Oz or something? Can you remember, Jim? No, I've got mine are from. Australia as well. Yeah, I really like that. I use it sometimes. Um, people come to the house and say, can I have that? Normally I give loads of stuff away. I don't mind giving people anything they want, really, but I'm not giving anybody that. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> um, I, I really liked the um, the 96 Tears T-shirt. And at one point we were doing really discreet little... Rats, very, uh, close inspection they, uh, from a distance rather. They look more like um, a Lacoste badge. Oh, I've seen them. I've got one of them somewhere. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah. Occasionally, I'm amazed to see s someone wearing a purple helmets T-shirt, which <laughs> has got to be well. That's third. Uh, that's thirty years old. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> but they <laughs> did. <laughs> There's a few things I've seen from the stage, but I don't know if they're funny or um, in the present climate, they'd probably be considered absolutely shocking. So I'll save that for the book. <laughs> <laughs> I think the funniest thing that I can remember was actually on stage. Um, and I think there's some footage of it somewhere where a guy is in Hereford. Can you remember that? A guy jumped up on stage oh, yeah. and he's too... And his pallet fell out and there was a tooth and a pallet and some wire and stuff on the stage. And you and me just about finished ourselves off. Can you remember that? Yeah, it was his, well, it was his, um, what do you call them? Falses. Um, yeah, yeah. Dropping out just when he jumped up, as he jumped up on stage. I tell you, uh, though, um, your first ever gig with the Stranglers was in the main sports hall in Pristina. In yeah. Costco. Yeah. And um, that female squaddy managed yeah. to jump up on stage and take her trousers down and moon to the assembled 5,000 soldiers there. Um, <laughs> and it's the first time I ever heard the expression, <laughs> uh, what was it, chocolate starfish? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> is, it, is that what was it? Yeah. Is it 
chocolate stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure I don't know what you mean. Like, I haven't got the faintest like. She got arrested. That was yeah. very funny. Later on, we saw her walking around in tears, and she was in the mosh pit, and uh, her sidearm pistol. No, it was a different girl. Different was it girl. A different girl? Yeah, because I yeah, it's the same gig. Yeah. Um, at one point, sort of looking over the um, uh, over the uh, side of the stage, and suddenly there's a sort of big gap appearing uh, where there's a mosh pit, and there was um, a female officer had lost her gun, it yeah. come out of the holster, yeah. and they were looking for it, and they if they did eventually find it under the yeah. stage. Yeah. Yeah. It got kicked under the stage, I yeah. think. Yeah. Saved her ass, actually. <laughs> so that was... That's a, that's a, a court martial, I think, if you lose your... Yeah, name. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I do like uh, the challenge of playing uh, uh, the bass parts in uh, genetics and baroque bordello I, My... I do enjoy walk on everything i do in walk on by but it's never the same from one night to the next yeah i just love to play the guitar solo in walk on by because every night even though i play it the same or at least i try to it's a challenge i mean it's firmly ingrained in my head now so i don't you know it's not it's not as challenging as it once was because i know it off by heart and i play it the same all the time but when it comes, I still look forward to it, playing that guitar solo. For proper bashing out chords and keeping it, keeping it going and just getting those really chords, I still love um, Goodbye to Lose. I just love that song. I love the jig. It's just, just, it's, it's just right arm action all the time. And as we know, I'm great with my right arm. So I just keep it going, you know. <laughs> Well, he's got a fantastic one of a daffodil on his bum, but no one's ever seen that. Um, so, <laughs> take it away, my friend. Well, I've, I've personally got nothing against tattoos. However, um, when I was uh, in my teens, I, you know, I don't know, I came across a, a piece of writing about Buddhism, which I was quite interested in. I still am. And um, it mentioned the fact that any accoutrements that we put on our bodies are psychological paraphernalia. So that always stuck in my mind. But a few years later, when I wanted to be a, a rebel, um, I, uh, I had uh, an earring. And I had a little uh, uh, necklace, I think, that Susie Susie might have given me. Um, the earring lasted a few years until I saw Duran Duran in one of their first videos and they all had earrings so I thought fuck that <laughs> well I got my first tattoo when I was 21 um, from a proper old shitty back straight tattoo place in Sunderland which actually was the only place really that you could get them in them days uh, and the guy really was smoking a fag with greasy hair and, and big fat geezer and absolutely no hygiene to speak of. Uh, for, 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 I mean, later, later in my life, um, I would get them to commemorate places that I'd been to. So I've been tattooed in New York, uh, Milan, um, Wellington in New Zealand, uh, b b b several places in Australia. Yeah, they're just they're, mine are just mementos and souvenirs of where I've been. Well, being being a bit puritanical myself, any pleasure I have makes me feel guilty. <laughs> Thank you.
that's uh, an impossible that's an impossible uh, question to answer frankly i mean it's it's almost as bad as um, someone saying um, who's your favorite child <laughs> hi i don't know yeah i guess i mean i i'm 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 very proud of relentless ah oh, yeah yeah, I like that. I, think I, it's I like that. Warren's finest moment. Well, ah, uh, yeah, I, I do. I do like that tune. But but, but I, I agree with you. I agree with you, mate. I, it's, you know, uh, that's an exceptional. Yeah, but there are sometimes there are exception. There's an exceptional day, and Relentless is uh, one of the high points of of uh, Baz's uh, songwriting, and uh, I think the whole band loves that song. And I think. Uh, most people do. For me, it would be uh, Glastonbury, um, which was exceptional. Uh, we uh, we'd never played there before; haven't played there since. Um, we were opening the what they call the other stage at on the Friday afternoon. Um, we were all backstage and uh, we didn't have any idea if there was anyone out there because you could hear a pin drop. It was seriously quiet and very polite and, you know, corporate almost. Um, and I remember asking one of the crew about five minutes before we went on if there was anyone out there. Uh, <laughs> and he went, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was a beautiful day. Um, a, a, just a gorgeous English summer's day and we walked on stage to 80,000 people um, and that's right uh, played played our art played a greatest hit set which seemed like we walked on stage farted turned around and walked off again it went that quickly and fortunately although the BBC didn't film it um Individual punters did. And uh, what are you gonna say? So, I know what you're gonna say. You've never let me forget this, you fucking so, have you? There you're is <laughs> there is a recording, there is a recording <laughs> of Bazzi's solo in Something Better Change. And it's fortunately it's been recorded for posterity. Uh, it's probably been the <laughs> <laughs> You twat. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few a few gigs I would have loved to have been uh, a punter at the Glasgow Apollo gig when the S Glasgow City Council came to judge us and all the bands of that generation which is a bit wrong because we weren't certainly weren't representing all the other bands and um, and then a few um, few kids managed to somehow get on that stage and it was about 20 foot high and then they were, you know, they were hassled by security people, and I jumped down. I wouldn't be able to do that now, and I would have loved to have been a punter then, seeing that. So, uh, JJ, I'll speak to you next week, mate. Take it easy. Well, we might speak before then. Yeah, might have some stuff. I might have something stuff, some stuff to send you. Maybe. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. That's always. That's always. A pleasure. Um, if not, if I don't speak to you over the weekend, I'll speak to you next week, okay? Okay, mate. Yeah, Enjoy great... your weekend. Lots of love, man. Yeah, love to you too. Bye. Bye.